Many thousands of years ago in East Asia, there existed a mighty creature, the woolly mammoth. Popularized by the discovery of cave paintings, skeletons, and even entire frozen carcasses, this furry giant captured the public's attention with the thought of a real-life Jurassic Park scenario. Could we resurrect this ancient relative of the Asian elephant? Almost six years ago, a team of Japanese scientists predicted they would successfully clone a woolly mammoth within five years. So... where is it? Before we get into the how, let's look at why people are so interested in the possibility of bringing back the mammoth. For the scientific community, recreating an extinct creature would be an historic first. For the first time in history, scientists could compare their deductions about an extinct creature with a living, breathing specimen. For zoos and parks, it would be a huge attraction. Think what you could charge for admission to see the first successfully cloned woolly mammoth. And of course, for the public, it would be just like living Jurassic Park, just without all the actual dinosaurs and horrific carnage. Now, back to the how. In 2013, a well-preserved mammoth carcass was discovered in Siberia. This specimen, nicknamed Buttercup, created a ripple of excitement in the scientific community because it contained what was referred to as red fluid, thought to be blood. If so much as one single intact cell nucleus could be found in a red blood cell, scientists could insert it into an elephant egg and implant the egg into a surrogate mother elephant to bear the child. Unfortunately, the news came in 2014 that scientists found no such red blood cells. If a better preserved mammoth carcass is discovered, and if it does contain intact red blood cells, the next problem scientists will face is how exactly to retrieve an elephant egg, implant the mammoth DNA, and then return the fertilized egg. To date, no one has figured out even the first step, obtaining the egg. One expert of genetically engineered animals and professor at Texas A&M said, Taking the nucleus out of one cell and transferring it to another, that's easy. You can do that in labs all over the world. But all the other things that have to come together to make an animal is difficult, getting the eggs to begin with. Another avenue that scientists are considering is using genome editing techniques to essentially build mammoth DNA. The same technology that allows the editing of human DNA, as referenced in my previous video, might also allow scientists to introduce traits found in mammoths into elephants. These traits include hair attributes, ear shape, and subcutaneous fat, among others. Many scientists believe that starting with a modern elephant is the best approach. They suspect that there most likely won't be a de-extinction of woolly mammoths exactly how they existed thousands of years ago. Instead, they expect to see a genetically modified elephant with mammoth traits that would allow it to adapt to the mammoth's traditional icy habitat. First, the edited genetic code would be inserted into elephant stem cells, which would be carefully nurtured and developed into what are called organoids, which are cellular structures that perform organ functions in the lab. After a few years of tests in a laboratory environment, the fully edited genome could be inserted into the egg of an Asian elephant, as it's the closest genomic match. From there, if the development and birth went off without any problems, we would see the first hybrid mammoth. Not quite woolly mammoth, but not quite elephant either. If at some point in the future scientists were able to reintroduce mammoths into the wild, it would be more than just a cloning achievement. Returning such a key species to the tundras could even help stave off some of the effects of global warming. In the Pleistocene era, when mammoths roamed the barren landscapes of the tundra, their foraging for grass buried beneath the snow had the positive effect of exposing the ground to arctic chill, keeping it thoroughly frozen. This kept the CO2 trapped in the permafrost from being released into the atmosphere and warming the climate. In some tests, it's been determined that soil where large animals are present is around 30 degrees Fahrenheit colder than soil in areas without the animals. So when can we expect to see attempts at birthing a mammoth? Some groups put the estimate as early as 2018. A group at Harvard, as well as Suam Biotech, the group that will clone your dog for $100,000, are both working on it as we speak. Of course, there are ethical concerns to take into consideration. Elephants are very intelligent, very social animals. It's not yet apparent how they might react to being subjected to tests and many potential failed births. Would the baby even be accepted by the elephant community? After all, mammoths are about as closely related to Asian elephants as humans are to chimpanzees. For some insight as to what an early cloned mammoth's life might look like, we can look back to Dolly, the first ever successfully cloned animal. Dolly the sheep was born in 1996 and was plagued by severe health issues such as arthritis and progressive lung disease. She only lived about half the normal lifespan of the typical sheep, dying at six years old. However, in a 2016 study in which 13 sheep were cloned, not one of them displayed any indication of poor health. Such studies seem to indicate that Dolly was a fluke and that cloning should not negatively affect the subject, but we'll just have to wait and see. One interesting thing to note is that the woolly mammoth wouldn't be the first extinct animal to be cloned. In January of 2009, scientists from the Center of Food Technology and Research of Aragon announced that they had more or less successfully cloned a Pyrenean ibex, a type of mountain goat that was declared extinct in 2000. They said more or less successful because the clone lived a short life, dying shortly after its birth due to physical defects in its lungs. So back to the topic of the woolly mammoth. Do scientists have the means to successfully clone a woolly mammoth, provided they find the intact cells to work with? 
Yes. Would the mammoth be born with or develop health issues? Possibly. There's still speculation on whether or not clones have a higher likelihood of developing health problems compared to naturally born animals. Should you subscribe to this channel and like this video? Yes. Yes, you should. As always, my videos are intended to spark your interest in these topics. If you want to learn more about cloning and the quest to bring back the woolly mammoth, check out the links and resources in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. Your support makes all the difference. Feel free to leave a like or a comment below, and let me know what you think of the idea of cloning extinct species. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or watch them all by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.